Can you come to order, please? Thank you. Okay, so our next presenter, most a stranger to us, is William Elliott, project manager. He has a verbal update on the Pearson Plaza development. Mr. Elliott, have we found Mr. Elliott in the crowd yet? I know he was here earlier. Okay. He's trying to make his way through. Okay. Mr. Elliott, you're on. There he is. He knows how to make an entrance, too. Look at that. <laughs> Thank you, Worship Council. Um, I kind of thought my appearances before you on this matter were at an end, uh, but apparently not. Um, I was asked to do an update for Council tonight in response to some of the uh, uh, recent what I refer to as, as chatter uh, about the, the plaza and the state of the, uh, of the project. As a matter of fact, uh, it was significant enough that uh, Chief Officer and I, uh, uh, with uh, Mr. DiBartoli being away, uh, uh, made a trip down to Barrie to meet with the developer to get the information from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Uh, and I'd like to thank the Chief for, for making the time available to do that. As we go along, I think it's important to remember that uh, the project is now in the hands of the, of the developer. Uh, the city has virtually no control over the project, how it rolls out, well, because of, of three important things. The property was sold to McGowan and Associates uh, on March 4th, 2014. The site plan control agreement was approved by council on April 7th, 2014. Uh, the building permits were ready to be picked up on June the 3rd, 2014 and were actually issued on July 8th of 2014. So the city's only real role since June is to monitor the construction uh, and perform the required inspections. What we discovered uh, upon our, our visit to McAllen and Associates was that the current issue that they're dealing with is a cost overrun in their construction budget. And that relates to a, their construction engineer's requirement to have the foundation of the building pinned to the bedrock. And as anyone knows who saw the, the site preparation going on, uh, on the east end of the property there's a significant amount of fill, which means in order to pin it you have to remove a significant amount of fill to get to the bedrock. Uh, my point here is that the site preparation was done strictly in accordance with McAllen's engineer's requirements. Uh, my follow up comment is perhaps if the engineer who had done the, the geotechnical work had consulted with the engineer who was doing the building, they might have avoided some of, this, uh, some of these issues. Um, but the bottom line is the city delivered exactly the shovel ready site that McGowan's geotechnical report required. In order to address the cost overruns, it is necessary for McGowan's designer, engineer, construction manager, and this is an important part, contractor, to get together and realign the buildings. Basically to move buildings away from where the deep flow is uh, and put them where there's less flow, uh, possibly to switch that with, with parking. As I mentioned, the building permits were issued in July. That includes Sobe. Sobe has their building permit and has selected their contractor. But of course, they want to see the new way out before they will proceed. Uh, even though their, their location, and I think there's an update, uh, probably won't change. Uh, one of the other major concerns that was identified by, by Sobe's is that they want to be sure that the paving and curbing will be complete this fall so that their store can open as soon as it is completed. Uh, I handed out the redesign that we received today at about 5.30, so I haven't really had much of a chance to take a look at it, other than one of the, the messages that Chief Officer and I communicated to, to the developer was there were three things that have always been uh, kind of sacrosanct in the design. Uh, one of them is that we said, uh, and these all relate back to the nature of our, our demographics. 
One of those things was that the, the new world must all be on one level. The second was that there must be a closed transit between all of the, all of the shops uh, within the new mall so that once someone was there, they didn't have to go back outside to go to a different store. And the third, that there'd be some type of social area, some type of gathering area uh, to replicate that, what, that was available in the old mall. Uh, so having had a quick look at the, uh, the revised design, uh, they indicated that those three items have been, uh, been kept. Uh, this isn't a site plan. City Council ultimately has the uh, authority and is required to approve or not approve a revised site plan. And that's because the original site plan was approved by resolution of council. So that must be when the, set, uh, the, addition, when the new site plan is submitted, it will have to come to council. And council and council alone decides whether or not the site plan gets approved. If a new site plan is approved, then that part of the building that's been changed will be subject to a new uh, building permit uh, once the new plans are, are reviewed. Uh, my understanding from the developer is they are expecting by this Friday to have certified the plan. Uh, I know they sent it to Sobeys for Sobeys input. Uh, and again, the expectation is by this Friday they will be submitting a new site plan for consideration by council. So I will answer those questions that I can, but again, I think it's important for people to remember the city did exactly what the city promised that it would do, which is deliver a shovel-ready site to the developer's specifications, and that was done back in March. Before I open it up to questions, Chief, is there anything you wish to add? Just uh, for everybody's uh, information, the Chief Officer is the acting CEO this last week and this week. Yeah, as, as uh, William said, we, we attended uh, the offices in Barrie. Uh, they're very committed to continuing uh, on with the project full steam ahead. Uh, as uh, was indicated, uh, those particular, uh, the engineer, architect, designer, they all had to get into one room and, and work on this redesign that's still taking place. Uh, now they're into the costing part on these, uh, these revisions. Uh, this revision will go to uh, building controls and uh, the clerk's office uh, tomorrow to verify that it uh, coincides with all the requirements of the uh, initial site plan that was approved by council. And if there's anything that's uh, not quite right, that will be brought forward. Uh, once we get the new site plan, um, it'll come to council. If we have to hold a special meeting, we'll hold a special meeting so that there's absolutely no delays on the municipal end. And on the timing issue, that's supposed to be in our staff's hands by Friday, William? Uh, because this came so late today, I didn't have a chance to follow up with the, the staff at McCallum's. Uh, but those were the two original dates, was that we would have the draft, if you want to refer to it, uh, of the revision today and the costings by Friday. For City Council to review and I suppose make any changes to the site plan thereafter, correct? I'm making an assumption that oh, okay. by sending it to Sobeys and by sending it to the City today, they're hoping to get any initial feedback, any uh, concerns uh, brought forth immediately because if they have to do design changes, they want to do that obviously before they submit it, something for a site plan approval. Okay, thank you. Okay, Council, questions, comments? We'll start at the end. Councilor Finnemar. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, to, through you to Mr. Allen. This looks very familiar to the very first drawing, does it not? It's, it's not that far off uh, when we have the, the, the dollar store at the one end and, and the grocery store at the other end. Uh, one of the revisions had the dollar store uh, come back and, and be next to the grocery store. So yeah, it's similar that way. It's been pulled back towards the uh, west end uh, to avoid the, where the, the deep fill is, but the basic outline is very similar. And a follow-up question, if I might. So, um, once the site plan is produced and then um, presented to council, then they can immediately begin the work. And so we're looking at a delay of past Christmas probably for the opening of Sobeys. Is that? Okay? Um, I'm just going by the time frames we've been given in the past of six to seven months for for building. And um, with that, 
is all the services going to be put in immediately so that and the paving done so that when they if they are ready to go to opening in February they can open because everything will be done perhaps and that's correct. Anybody who's been by the site will see that the, the site development work is ongoing and that contract includes paving, curbing, uh, all of those all of those items. Uh, I can't speak for Sobeys. I can pass on the sense that I got from uh, the senior people. I know certainly locally they're very keen to get going. Uh, the concern that was, was, was passed on to me was they need the paving and the curbing done so they can open the store as soon as it's ready, whether, whether that's January, February, or, or, or March. Councillor Patrick? Thank you. Thank you, Worship, through you. <clears throat> so we've just received this drawing as we sat at our council seats. I sure hope that the site plan agreement doesn't come forward with these numbers. Our original site plan was for 87,000 feet in our agreement. We agreed to a site plan that took 8,000 feet out to be built at a future date. This new site plan is now down to 56,858 feet. That's astronomical. That takes away from what our goals were originally. A realignment, I don't have any issues with. If the developer needed a realignment for the existing footprint of what he had proposed and we approved at the last council meeting. I wouldn't have an issue with it. It's his land and how he's got to build on it to make it work for him, I have no issues with. This now, this drawing, we'll see because it's not an official site plan, has seven tenants, no retail other than Dollarama and the grocery store. This isn't what this community needs. This community needs a lot more than that. And I think that we've got to do something to hold this developer to what he originally proposed. This is just all he's done is shrink the building. And, and that doesn't work for this community. This community needs development, and we need a lot of development. We don't need a developer that we've given millions of tax dollars, so be it not all local tax dollars. But there's millions of tax dollars put into this property, and we need this developer to, with, to hold up his end of our original agreement and get us some commercial space. There's absolutely no room on this property based on this new plan. There's no future development. There's no room for a retailer to come into this community, which we are in dire need of. During your discussions, Mr. Elliott, did you have that discussion with them about the number of tenants proposed versus what you see here? Right. Yeah, when, when we had the discussion with them, um, I mean, I, I guess the short version is the, that he said very pointedly uh, he will he will build to what he has tenancy for, with the exception of the what we've always referred to as the south pad, uh, which in this in this drawing is just a is just a blank space, uh, but that's the south pad that's always been there as as a future development. But he was very clear in my mind anyway that that for the main structure it was only those at this point it only those that he had signed leases that he would build. Okay. Councillor Mann? Thank you, Mr. Uh Three to Mr. Elliott. First of all, thank you for bringing the update forward tonight. I think it's important for council as well as and especially the citizens of our community to be aware that there is still progress on the site and it is still moving forward. I do echo the same concerns as Councillor Patry had. Um, I just, you know, based on the numbers and the assumption that the 7,800 square foot is no longer an issue because it has uh, shrunk considerably, what was the original size of the 40 hillside build? What was that square footage? 20? I want to say it was about 108, I think, on the, on the original design and then the site plan that was approved. Chief, do you remember? It was, the it was something. It was about 80, 87. Okay. So there is still going to be expansion possibilities on site at that south path? Yes, there's still, there's still room on the site. Not obviously attached based on this, but there is still that potential. You have to remember this is a draft uh, that was received, like William said, at 530. So this isn't the official site plan. So uh, when we get that site plan, we'll find out if that, that pad is there or not. So. Okay. Thank you. Still does not. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
I'm a little concerned as well with the reduction in size. Uh, I do appreciate the fact that there is some vacant property at the south end of the uh, of the lot for further development. Um, I do not want to see this slow down any longer. Uh, however, I will remind uh, my fellow councillors and staff that we were told very clearly that the building that was proposed would be built regardless of whether there was tenants in it or not at the time of the building and that he would continue to fill up whatever vacant space was being built. Uh, I want it clearly on the record that we are not getting what was deemed that we were to get. Uh, that being said, there is no way that I want to hold up this progress. Uh, it's been slow enough. It's time to get it moving. And if it means approving this as long as there's future development available, uh, then I will probably look favorably upon it. But again, not until we see the final plan, as everybody can understand. And I think it's important to, to recall the notes that I mentioned, and that site plan control agreement was approved by council in April. So it's not, a, it's not an undertaking of, of council, it's not an undertaking of the city. This is, this has totally been uh, the developer and the, uh, the developer's engineers and the, and the forecasting that they did and the costing that they, that they came back with. The city has, has no control over uh, what's taken place. The city's control now is in uh, dealing with a revised site plan if no one it's submitted. Okay. One final comment, then I'll chime in. Just a question, if I may, Mr. Mayor. Uh, realizing how late it was, you've got this, you've got this one. Did we manage to get some copies made so they could be distributed? Or uh, can we have that done? Yeah, it's scribbled on mine, so if you've got a clean uh, copy. If you, if you notice, there's a lot of white space on the top. I was over at my office at 6.20 trying to figure out how to get it large enough that people could see. So I have a copy here, but we do have it uh, electronically, so it can be it can be distributed. Okay. One final comment, then I'll make one. One final question. I don't know if Mr. Elliott would be able to answer it, Your Worship. So I'll just direct it at you, and you can direct it to whoever deems appropriate. We have an approved site plan agreement. What are the legal implications if we hold the developer to the existing site plan agreement and what would happen to the timelines potentially if we did that? That's probably appropriate for Mrs. Sprague since she's the one that deals with site plan agreements but fairly regularly. As pointed out by Mr. Elliott, the, 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 uh, the developer actually owns the property. Um, we hold some letters of credit, which is sufficient to complete exterior works, for instance, the parking lot and curbing. But other than that, we don't have a. I don't. I don't know how we could hold them to the original plan. So there's no penalty clauses. Is that correct? Hey, we did. Uh, we did have occasion to speak to the city solicitor on that. The second. Go ahead. On that issue, and, I, and I'm, I'm looking to the chief. The uh, move that he said is, is uh, ultimately would end in, in litigation. Uh, and my sense from him was that uh, litigation would not uh, result in a favorable outcome for anybody. Yeah. That being said, you know, that's, that's always an option. Okay. Councilor Finnemore. I guess the last thing I just want to say is that I feel that we are between a rock and a hard place at this point and that we need to support the businesses that have made a commitment to come in the mall, even though there are few of them and we certainly could use more. But you know, Sobeys was out of the came out of the block the day after the disaster to be the first one to say they will stay, they will rebuild. And if we look at delaying this because we're not happy with the way things have turned out that have been totally out of our control, then ultimately it's, it's, it's 
the, the local businessman who's going to pay the biggest price for, for that, as well as the citizens and the taxpayers of Elliott Lake. So I really feel that, that we've been put in a, in a really hard place and that we have to take a, a look at everything. And if we have to approve this because we don't have any other choice, I, I'm not sure at this point where to go, where to go with that, except to, to say to the citizens of Elliott Lake, this is never what we intended this to be. We did ask for an enclosed mall. We did ask for a social gathering place so that we could give some familiarity back to the citizens of Elliott Lake after they lost so much. But the intention of a lot of other businesses, I believe, because of the time frames, they've lost that. I don't know if it's the ability. I don't know what it is. I see in here there was stores that committed to coming back that said they'd be back, and I don't see them on the list, and that's very unfortunate. And uh, I know that there's been committees, I know that there's been other organizations in town that have worked really hard at trying to get a general merchandiser here. There just is none available. I know that there's been personal visits, I know that there's been phone calls, I know that everything's been done at our part to try to attract a, a general merchandiser. And, no, and with the economy that is happening in Canada right now, that's another whole other layer to this. There's just layers upon layers upon layers. And I just feel really bad that everyone's going to be disappointed. I am extremely disappointed because this is not, when we began this venture and we decided to go the route that we did, this is not what the outcome that we wanted it to be. And I just need to say that. Thanks. And we, and if I did, we certainly were, were under the impression at the beginning that items such as the general merchandiser would be something that could be accommodated, right? That was always in the plan there was going to be a general merchandiser. Even though, regardless of what happened at the at the oil mall, we were going to lose our general merchandiser in the in the community. There was talk, well you could have this one, you could have that one. Uh, and I think it's important to remember that, you know, when we talk to the developer, they're still looking at that. They're still saying, okay, well if if we get additional tenancy, we will build additional space. It's getting that it's getting that tenancy, and it's getting that tenancy at a, uh, at a lease rate that makes it economically uh, viable uh, for them to do it. Um, I can tell you I as much as anyone, and the, and the chief as much as anyone, feel like, you know, there's, uh, the, the, the options are being reduced and reduced and reduced uh, and reduced, uh, and nobody likes it. Honestly, nobody likes it, and, and I have to say, um, you know, for Sobeys and for Pierre locally, I mean, they've been put in a terrible position because they've been, as you said, the most anxious to get going, right? They want to get this done. They want to get in the new store. Uh, they want to get going, and I, and I have no... I don't blame them at all for saying, we want to be sure what's, what's happening before we start to build. The good part is... They have their permit, they have their contractor, as soon as they're satisfied they can they can start. But 100%, if I were them, I would do exactly the same thing. I would want to be comfortable that I knew what was going before I started. Okay. I'll take my, my leave and opportunity. I'd like to first thank you, William and uh, Paul and by extension, of course, Mr. DiBartoli for having to go down and to deal with, uh, with this matter. I know it can't have been pleasant, however, it certainly looks as if you've achieved something, and that is the three main parts of the project, and that were to have a common space, although it looks somewhat less sizable than the last one, to have the interactive walkways where nobody has to walk outside in the snow, as well as on one level. So you did achieve that. Um, I do believe the developer should have done a little bit more homework on the engineering side, because simply put, that could have been resolved in the design of the, the shovel-ready project. I mean, simply put, I'm not an engineer, but if you have to go to bedrock and you've got 30 feet to fill, you should be able to cost that out and then, of course, make your lease arrangements accordingly. That didn't happen. At the end of the day, from what I hear from our clerk, there's very little we can do as far as remedy that with respect to penalties or anything else. So going down that road, at least imminently, doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. What we have said to the citizens of Ellie Lake, and they're all sitting here today, they want an enclosed shopping mall. That's what they want. So we need to start working towards that as diligently as possible. And if it does mean that we have to add on to it later, so be it. At the end of the day, the last thing I want to see is that we have nothing up there. But what's akin to a driving range? I don't think anybody wants that. So we do have some time to still negotiate with the developer, as I understand. They are putting the site plans together, but they are still 
in discussions with some people as you've discussed. Hopefully they can come up with something better. But at this point, this is what we have. Come Friday, we're going to have more detail. We'll come early next week, this council is going to have to make that decision. And uh, we're going to need the input from the citizens. And we're sitting here today, so I just implore all of you, pick up the phone, get the emails out, and start calling us. Tell us what you want, because that's exactly what we need. So thank you very much. You've already bloody told you what we need. Uh, you left one behind, William. <laughs> Okay, so we'll just take a couple of minutes because it looks like there's a few people that want to, uh, to leave the chambers, so we'll hold off for a second until we move on. So there'll be nowhere to buy underwear. You can't buy it in the food store and you can't buy it in Dollarama. So there'll be no place to buy underwear. <laughs> this one's gone black. Oh. Nothing's happened. 